Hey there, Tori here with the Quilting on the Side podcast. Really quickly, I want to share some exciting news with you. I wrote a book. It's called Workshops Unleashed, How to Design Engaging and Successful Workshops for Quilters and Crafters. So if you're ready to have fun, make money, and truly connect with your students, Workshops Unleashed will guide you every step of the way. You'll learn how to craft sessions that resonate with your audience, attract more participants, and keep them coming back for more. With practical tips, templates, and marketing strategies, you'll discover how to turn your passion for teaching into a thriving business. And this book has everything you need to make your workshops a hit. You can pre-order now through September, your ebook or your paperback version of Workshops Unleashed, and you can check the show notes for the link. So I hope you enjoy this episode of the Quilting on the Side podcast. Welcome to Quilting on the Side, the podcast where we uncover the secrets to turning your passion for quilting into a profitable side hustle. I'm Tori from the Quilt Patch by Tori. And I'm Andy from True Blue Quilts. And together, we're your co-hosts on this exciting journey of creativity, entrepreneurship, and all things quilting. We're here to help you navigate the world of quilt pattern design, course creation, digital marketing, and running an online quilt business. We've been through the ups and downs ourselves, so we know what it takes to make money from your favorite hobby. That's right, Tori. We're going to share our experiences on how we've grown our businesses while balancing family with other paying work responsibilities. It's not always easy, but it's definitely possible. Welcome to another episode of Quilting on the Side, where we take you behind the scenes as we grow our quilting businesses on the side of our regular jobs and our family duties. So today we need to tackle the beast. It's something that I am not great at, Tori, so I'm really going to lean on you for those expert opinions. But all things Instagram. What do we need to know to get some traction on that great social media platform? Yeah, I'm really excited about this one. This is where I show up the most is on Instagram. That's my main social media platform. So I'm excited to kind of share a little bit about it. Yeah, that's wonderful. I just got a little bit tired of the hamster wheel that you can get into on social media because, I mean, One of the core tenets is to be consistent. So you have to show up and you have to show up on some kind of regular schedule so that the platform gets to know you and push your content out to the right people and grow your audience. So that's what makes it so good is that it does learn from your behavior. So talk to us a little bit about that idea of showing up consistently. Yeah, so consistently, you want to make sure that you are showing up about the same time, the same days of the week. Consistency doesn't necessarily mean you have to be on Instagram every single day. Now, if you want to, you can show up that way and show up multiple times a day if you want to, and that can help grow your your Instagram rapidly. However, if you're that's not in your bandwidth, like you were talking about how you got burned out on the hamster wheel, it's okay to show up once a week. It's great to show up three times a week. That's kind of the the golden spot, I would say, for most businesses is being able to show up three times a week on Instagram. Um, but consistency doesn't have to be every single day. It can be once a week if that is what's in your bandwidth. But I think what's even more important than consistency is using the features the where the way they're meant to be used. So that's I think our second one here is first we want to make sure we're being as consistent as we can. What's it? Whatever is in your bandwidth. And then secondly, are using the different features that Instagram provides. And they have a lot. Yeah, there's so many. And they have changed so much because I remember when, you know, the early days of Instagram, when people were promoting it as like a mini blog, because you could share all the pretty pictures that we especially like being visual uh, crafters with our quilting. And you could just write those short captions there to talk about the pictures, what you want to share. And now they have expanded beyond the photos to the videos with reels and um, 
the the story posts are even a different kind of short form content. And so talk to us about your best tips for utilizing all those different uh, features there that Instagram allows. Definitely. So I'm going to, I'm going to say that your, your posts and your carousels, and that's really what's going to be on your Instagram feed. That's your main stage is your Instagram feed. And that's where your posts go, your static posts, which is just a single picture or your carousels, which are the ones that slide. Sometimes I call them slides because they slide. (laughs) So you can put up to 10 slides in an Instagram post uh, currently, but that's where you want to think of that's uh, your main stage. So that's where you want to show off like your latest quilt designs. You want to share sneak peeks of the patterns you have coming out. You want to give your followers like a behind the scenes look at your process. So if you're a long arm quilter, you want to show maybe a quilt in process in progress and there are some really fun ways that you can get really detailed uh, texture pictures from quilting too which is really fun Um, but that's where you really want to showcase your offers and a little bit about who you are as a business and then so that's your instagram feed that's your static post and your carousels and then you also have reels which are really being pushed right now it's currently instagram is kind of pushing both carousels and reels about the same. Um, There is a little bit of lower reach currently as we're recording this. Um, They're kind of pushing everyone's reach down a little bit. And there's a lot of speculation as to why. We don't really know why. Nobody really knows why. But they are messing with the algorithm currently. They are competing with bigger, big platforms like TikTok, which has grown huge since the pandemic. Um, so they're they're tweaking the algorithm here and they're trying to figure it out. And right now everyone's reach is kind of down, but they are still pushing reels and carousels out pretty well. So when you're creating your carousels and especially when you're creating your reels, keep in mind that this is going to be pushed to people who are not just in your audience, but new people as well. So when you're making reels, keep that in mind as those little short videos that those are being pushed out to people who don't know you. So you want to make sure that you are kind of introducing yourself with those. And that content is more fun. That can be a little more educational. So sharing tips and tricks that can um, bring people into your circle, that kind of thing. And then we also have stories which as you mentioned, stories, they're the short 24 hour videos or pictures that live in a certain place, like in your picture, like in your profile picture on Instagram. And the stories are made to show 24 hour type things. So what's inspiring in the moment? What are you doing today? What, um, what coffee do you drink in the morning? It's like little things like that. When you go on a walk, what do you find inspirational? You don't share those on your Um, your main stage, you're sharing those behind the scenes in your stories. So it helps others. That's a place where it's great to get to know you as a person. So anything you want to share about you as a person, it's also a great place to get some interaction. So polls, little quizzes, little stickers and things like that they have on there is really fun to use. Again, using all of those different features um, in a fun way to help keep everyone engaged with what you're sharing. That can be really fun. And there's a few more that we don't see used as often. There's um, what they call IGTV, which is Instagram, the long form content. So those are your longer videos. Those are great for doing um, collaborating like, with other designers, other long armors, other businesses to do like interviews, or you can interact with your audience and do like maybe a live question and answer session. So you can go live and that can count towards long form content on Instagram. So that's a feature. And then there's another one where they call it Instagram shopping, where you can actually tag your products and set up like a shop on Instagram. And that was really big a few years ago, but yeah. Yeah. That that shopping feature, um, I really need to do some more research because obviously as a pattern designer with a shop full of patterns, I need to be linking that. And I just haven't done the research. And that's a good thing to remind our audience that you need to set aside time to work on your business and do some of these foundational things like setting up the product suite that Instagram can pull from to to allow people to shop and, you know, set aside that hour to schedule your 
reels or, you know, or even just brainstorm a, a bunch of topics that you could do as reels. Um, getting into some nitty gritty there, some ideas. Where do you find your ideas for reels or any of I... these type of posts? <laughs> I, I put together a giant list of hooks. So it's a, it's what you put at the top of your caption or within a video or within a picture that kind of grabs someone's attention. So a hook. So something like there was a big one that was popular called POV or point of view. And then you'd share a point of view. So point of view of um, one that I found really funny the other day was a long armor put her camera upside down and said point of view of the long arm so the long arms watching her quilt and she's making like the face it's a funny face right so that was that was a funny one that was showing not only what she does for customers but also it's kind of goofy and it was trending so it was kind of a fun combination um but i will look at other people's reels and i'll save those so there is a saved feature on instagram where you can save them and now create folders so you can save those um, ideas for later so when you sit down to kind of plan out some reels you have a folder full of ideas that you saw throughout the week where you're like that was fun i can recreate that or i really like the sound she used on this reel so i can save that one and go back and grab that sound and use it for my own reel so we're not you, you want to make sure you're not copying but you can use them for inspiration you can save some that caught your attention and look at them again and see why did this catch my attention and can i kind of recreate this for my own audience and have a little bit of fun with that yeah that idea of copying i think is you know reels are kind of based on that because there's this whole idea of you know trending sound or that that trending topic and we all put our own spin on whatever it is but you do you start seeing the same thing over again so you want to be aware of what is popular what is trending on Instagram so that you can kind of ride those waves because they do push out the those trending topics that will gather more attention. One other thing I was thinking about as you were talking about the different um, features and how to use them, that there really are three, I think, motivations for our posts on Instagram. And one is obviously to attract new people. So we want to do something that's introducing ourselves, that's maybe fun and fresh and catching people's eye. And then we have to nurture the, the audience that we have, that, you know, our core followers, what are they going to be interested in? Is there a technique I need to share? Um, is, you know, what, what are my thoughts on the current state of the industry? You know, you can, you can talk to people about that. What are, what are your favorite fabrics to use? All those kind of things. And then the third one would be making the offer, selling your product. That's yes. definitely, that definitely has a place. Yes, definitely. I like that you included those side by side because when you nurture, it feels better to sell because a lot of times we, we hesitate to sell, but you are a business and they will expect you to showcase your offers and they want to see what you're offering. It's the reason why they're following you and they don't know about you and they don't know if you're selling something if you don't actually go out there and show it. And I, I've really hesitated, um, especially years past on selling on every single post, but I, I watched a real, it's actually a real one day that said like, I'm a business. Of course, I'm going to sell to you. I've been upfront about that. I'm a business. I am showcasing. I'm a business. I am a personal like I'm a person and I have a personal brand, but I'm also a business. And this is a business like account. It's very clear and I will be selling to you. And if you don't want that kind of content, that's totally fine. You could unfollow me and that's okay. And I saw that and it just kind of, it was a light bulb that clicked because not only am I, I was, I am still, and I do, I give, 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 give. It's what it feels like. I'm just giving content all the time. And if I'm not trying to sell at any point and it's not a hard sell I always do like soft sales I'm like hey if you're interested in getting like my book is coming out in just a few weeks and um so I'm at the end of every reel I'm like hey if you want to know more about this topic I have a book coming out the pre-sales here comment and I'll send it 
you the link to it. And it's on every single post. And I see this contradictory opinion about how, you know, if you do that on every single post, it feels salesy. And I'm like, good, good, because I'm a business and I am selling and I can't do this unless I sell something. So and I don't want to show up as salesy. I want to show up as here. I'm giving you content. This is what I am about. And I can fully help you in this offer, in this pattern, in this service, in this course, in this workshop. This is where I can really help you. But here's a taste. So you get to know me and you get to know my offer. But if I'm no, I'm, I'm hesitant in telling you about that offer, I'm not going to be a business very long because that's that's way too much energy to put out there and not get anything coming back in. It's that it's that law of rest rest. I always get the word weird, word weird, weird word. <laughs> the law of reciprocity, reciprocity, and it's that you're giving and giving, and the universe wants to give back. There's that energy where you will get it back, and it's so much fun for me to show up on Instagram and give advice and give tips and be a little goofy and give what I can and then watch what happens with that law of reciprocity where the energy comes back and I get to help people and they like they light up and they I can see the stress just melt away when we go and do calls like in the DMMC and that in the my program the the digital marketing magic community where we show up and we talk about Instagram and we talk about Instagram at least once a month where we sit down and we kind of analyze what's happening and I get to see that the light bulbs click and the ideas start going and then they start posting on Instagram and I see like them getting engagement and it's it's just so exciting to watch that happen and I don't always get to see what they're doing like with their newsletters and stuff it's always like a little more behind the scenes but on Instagram I can see them showing up and really really enjoying themselves on Instagram speaking of which the third one so we talked about um, consistency right showing up consistently we talked about features using the different features on Instagram for what they're used for and then the last one to really I think enjoy showing up on any social media platform and I will say especially Instagram is to engage like if you are finding it the whole point of social is being social so talk to people yep yeah. I really find if you are if you are exhausted by showing up on these social media platforms, stop posting for a bit and just engage. Just go find people you like, things that you like, and just start engaging with those customers that you really you enjoy talking to. Look at watch their stories, laugh at their funny comments. You know, go and engage with people. It doesn't have to be just on your own post. It really is encouraged to go out and comment and message and talk to people like you're a real person. And Instagram will not only be more favorable towards you, but you'll have more fun talking to your friends on Instagram. Oh, it's just, it's it's yeah. way, it's way easier to show up when you know there's going to be engagement there. But you can't just sit there and wait for it. You have to go out and get it. Yeah, I think a lot of times, and especially true for me, is that I'm, I'm stuck in my own head. I'm stuck in my own account and I'm, you know, thinking, oh, I'm putting all this content out there and no one ever comments and oh, poor me. But like you said, it's, it's not always about me. You know, how many times do we just scroll through and, and yes, we notice the photos, but we haven't, we're just passing time. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure I'm getting in front of people, but I need to foster that connection. So that's where I've heard from a lot of coaches and, you know, it's a good habit to get into that when you sit down to open that Instagram app, set yourself a timer, you know, five minutes, 10 minutes, work up and say, I'm going to comment on three accounts, five accounts, 10 accounts. And don't just hit the like. I mean, that's nice, obviously, but I always try to put a meaningful comment. So that means I need to have at least three words. I can't just say pretty or face emoji. Yeah, emojis don't count. Emojis don't count as words. Right. You need to say something. So if I were to uh, 
comment on the quilt that's hanging behind Tori, I would say I really like how you used simple elements, half square triangles and two colors. And it's so dramatic and I love it, you know, so I've said a lot about that, but it's, it's not going to take that much time. So make it meaningful. Um, mm -hmm. And, and like you said, the universe will reward your efforts. It does, and Instagram does too. The algorithm likes it when you engage. So if you feel like the algorithm's against you, try stopping posting. Just stop for like a couple days, especially if you're the one who's showing up every single day and feeling exhausted. Stop for a couple of days and really just take some time to enjoy it. Go find some stuff that you like that is in your your ideal customer wheelhouse. So we're quilters, so we're not going to go look for, you know, um, I don't know, plants. makeup. We're going <laughs> to, I mean, might look plants. for makeup. I've but got like, a lot of plants. plants that might be good. Yeah, I got some plants on my too. <laughs> so yeah, you won't go look for plant accounts. I mean, you can go engage with them too, but also keep an eye out for your ideal customer. So newer quilters, or if you're interested in collaborating more, you can go look for other businesses, other pattern designers, other long armors, and just comment on, how do you do that? How did you set that up? Oh, I like how you like put this together. I mean, you can ask questions. You can, um, there was one piece of advice that I got was, was like, bury a lead in your comment. So lead Leave something that makes it easy for them to comment back. So like you talked about my quilt behind me, just leaving that I like the half square triangles. We're like, I can easily say, yeah, half square triangles are my favorite way to create patterns. They're like my favorite block ever. So I will, I use those all the time. And it makes it easy for me to respond to you. Um, and then there was, oh, there was one more thing. Oh, a messaging. Your stories everyone's stories has a little box at the bottom where you can send them a comment and it's a, like a private message and it's not like creepy like cold messaging like i get those all the time i'm sure you like everyone listening probably gets a handful of those a week where you just get a weird message out of nowhere these are responding to what you have in um that you're seeing in the story so it's it's a private message it can feel like a private conversation and it i think it really allows some connection there without it feeling like you're using them for public gain you know what i mean by yeah you're nodding <laughs> andy's nodding i think yeah, she gets what I'm, yeah. I'm getting at because it feels sometimes when you comment those generic like you mentioned pretty with a couple of emojis, it feels like you're just commenting to comment. It doesn't feel like you actually find what I'm doing pretty. It used to, it used to feel nice to have that pretty, but now with all the bots out there and we have people that are trying to take advantage of their businesses, they do little things like that just to raise their engagement. It doesn't feel authentic and you don't want to come across as inauthentic. So take yeah, take a few minutes. Like Andy said, set a timer. It's exactly what I tell my people in the community. I'm like, hey, just set a timer. I always suggest um, like uh, five to 10 minutes and then finding at least three to five accounts just to comment authentically. And again, you said more than three words. I'm just repeating in case you missed it. More than three words and emojis don't count. You can always add them at the end, but emojis don't count as words. Right. Yeah. I kind of use um my emojis as my little signature. So just like you have the tiny little avatar, um, I always use a blue heart, the party hat, and then a, I close it with a blue heart. So if anyone sees that, that's my little true blue quilt signature on Instagram with emojis. Um, so yeah. Yeah, it's, like how you made it fun. That's really fun. Yeah, I mean, no, people may not have noticed, but it's it's my little personal taglines. So uh, lots and lots of great ideas here. And um, we've got an event coming up, Tori, where people can dig in and start to plan out their Instagram and some other social media stuff. So uh, remind everybody what we do at the end of the month. So at the end of the month is September on the last Friday of the quarter, we are doing a free quarterly planning session where we sit down and we plan the next quarter. And this quarter is going to be getting ready for the fourth quarter, which is one of the biggest um, quarters when it comes to businesses because it is the holiday season. And um, so we'd love for you to join us. And I believe it's on the tw 28th. 28th of 28th. September. And once you 
go on to quiltingontheside.com. You'll see the event and you can register there for this free event and you will get the Zoom link and you can join us inside our um, private planning session. On the 27th, this Friday, on the 27th. Oh, wait, Friday the 27th. <laughs> Double check Good that. Good catch. Good catch. So <laughs> we hope to see everyone there. And thank you so much to our audience. If you are enjoying season three, would you please leave us a review on your podcast platform? And we love to hear from our listeners. And if you've got any ideas for topics that you would like, our perspective on, we're happy to share. So drop us a line and let us know what you are enjoying. What a great discussion. If you enjoyed this episode of Quilting on the Side, please leave us a review on whichever platform you're listening. It can be iTunes, Spotify, or even our YouTube channel. And hit the subscribe button so you don't miss our next chat. Until then, remember to have fun in your business and do a little quilting on the side.